Hi guys, the plan for this morning is to get a coffee and then head over to Sloan Square in Chelsea. For those of you who are new to my YouTube vlogs, you may not know that I produce most of the music using them myself. Many YouTubers just plunder SoundCloud for their tracks, but I actually have my own SoundCloud. So if you're interested in the music, be sure to check that out. Details are in the links below, and some of them are even free to download. I've also launched a second YouTube channel to showcase the tracks, where you can listen to them in high quality and uninterrupted, where I'm going to start producing simple music videos for them. And again, I'll put the links to that channel below. Before I go anywhere or do anything, I want to get a cup of coffee to go. We have some amazing independent coffee shops here in London and I always try and use them instead of the huge global chains when possible. And not because of some notion of being patriotic in the face of the global chains, tax faux pas. It's not a sense of community or a belief in their sustainability. It's simply because when you find a good one, they serve the most delicious coffee. I'm not snobby about it or knocking the big chains, I use them too, mainly out of simple convenience. They serve acceptable, consistent coffee if you're looking for a dose of caffeine. And their stores, although generic, unfortunately often seem more hospitable. They're, they're involved in community baby changing, toilet schemes, they've got free Wi-Fi, plug sockets and much more. Whereas the independents often go in the opposite direction with signs saying customer use only. But not all independents are equal. It takes real skill, passion and understanding to get the best from what is an ever-changing natural crop. Independents that get it right serve the most delicious coffee in town. The ones that get it wrong, well, it's disgusting. It's far worse than any global chain would make you. Workshop are one of the independents that get it right. They serve some of the most delicious coffee in London. If you want to find out what speciality coffee tastes like, I would recommend a trip to one of their stores. They roast their own beans and I also buy them for use at home, but I have to admit, they are far better at making a great cup of coffee than me. Also, it certainly doesn't cost any more to buy from the independents, so I'd recommend you come here, order a cup the way you would normally take it, and you'll taste the difference. The only thing is, once you go down this road, your regular, ubiquitous chain store cup just won't taste the same. Okay, I need to take the tube from here, Farringdon, to Sloan Square in Chelsea. Now I could just sit on a circle line tube and go around London, but that's pretty boring. What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to take a tube from here, Farringdon to King's Cross, then take the Piccadilly line down to South Kensington, and then a district or a circle line tube back to Sloan Square. It's probably not any faster, but it's certainly less boring, and it seems faster. On the map you can see it's a slightly more direct route across London, but with all the wandering around underground to make the changes, well, I hope it doesn't take any longer. So here we are, Sloan Square, Chelsea. I haven't actually explained what we're doing here. I have a card holder. It was a Christmas gift from my girlfriend. We tried to figure out when, and we think 2012. 
It's from Smythesons and this week the stitching came undone and it started to fall apart. It's lasted two and a half years. That's two and a half years of daily use, which I think is amazing and probably the longest a card holder has ever lasted me. So I'm going to buy another one to replace it. And Smythesons have a store just there on Sloan Street, just off Sloan Square. This week is the Chelsea Flower Show and it's just down the road from here. It's probably the most famous flower show in the world and it attracts thousands of visitors. So most of Chelsea is pretty busy today. I've only been to the flower show once and as a guest with the hospitality of a large department store here in London and it was amazing. It's actually really good fun but somehow the TV coverage makes it look entirely serious, very stuffy and pretty boring. But there's a real buzz in there. It's basically the most luxurious pop-up garden centre you can imagine, right in the middle of London. With bars, hospitality suites and all sorts going on. But I guess the BBC are not there to have a good time or party in one of the champagne lounges. But if you get the opportunity to go, I would. It's much more fun than they make it look. I'm not going this year, and I couldn't if I wanted to. It's a sellout, and unfortunately no one's invited me. But it turns out the Cadogan Estate and the RHS, who organised the flower show, are having a floral art show and competition on the streets of Chelsea. So they've turned part of Sloan Square into a fairy tale forest, which is the information centre for the event, and it's complete with a pop-up bar. Apparently this is the 10th year this competition has run. Basically a number of the retailers in the area adorn their stores with floral displays, and they've given me a map of the participants. The theme is fairy tales, and then expert judges pick a winner, and the public can also choose a winner online. Then there's this pop-up in Sloan Square and a Mad Hatter's tea party over in Duke of York Square. And it's market day over there today, so I'll go and take a look at all of that. But first, let's go and do what I came here to do originally and get a new card holder from Smythesons. As you can see, Smythesons are participating in this Chelsea and Bloom competition, so the store's been adorned with this amazing floral display. This is the last day of the competition, the last day of the displays and the judges picked the winners on the first day and Smyson were one of the winners, they came highly commended. So this is their collection of leather card holders and this is the one I've chosen. Black deerskin leather, three card pockets, and a little blue stitch on one edge to complement my Oyster card. No, not really, it's their corporate colour. The lady helping me asked if I wanted the holder personalised. They offer a service so I could have it embossed with my initials maybe, and my initial thought and answer was no. It's not a gift, it's for me, and I want to use it right away. And I imagine such a service would take some time and would probably not be done in store, let alone right away. But I was curious, so I asked how long it would take. The lady helping me said she would find out. She walked to the corner of the store and asked another lady who I hadn't even noticed sitting at a workbench in the rear corner of the store with all the equipment to do it right here, right now who said it would be done right away. The message was relayed to me, I could pop back in 15 minutes or whenever I was ready and it would be done for me. It's still not something I need doing, but I took the opportunity to ask this lady doing it if I could watch my card holder being embossed, if I could watch the process and vlog the process, which is probably something I guess she doesn't get often asked. And she's very kindly agreed, so that closed the deal on embossing. I'm having my initials in gold on one side. I'm interested to see how they do it and it's great to see a finishing touch being added to it. A final little piece of craftsmanship being added to it right here on Sloan Street in London. I'm having it done because I'm interested to watch it being done but it's an amazing service to offer. Effectively if you require it in store and almost while you wait. If you're buying a gift for someone, maybe one of Smyson's renowned notebooks or diaries or some of their amazing leather goods, having it personalised for the recipient makes it much more thoughtful and a much more personal gift. And if you've left it to the last minute, it's perfect. No one would believe you can have this done the same day. If you were given such a gift, you would imagine, as I initially thought, such a service would take some time and some prior planning.
Thank you. I'm really happy with that. I think that's a fantastic service. I've had mine done in gold, but you can also have it done in silver and I guess in natural as well without any colouring. I would imagine you can have as much as you want embossed provided it will fit as well, but they charge per character, so I've just had my initials done. So after that experience, I'd highly recommend Smyerson if you're looking for some fabulous leather goods and their diaries and notebooks are renowned worldwide. And that personalisation service I think is brilliant and a really nice thoughtful touch for any gift you buy someone. And this is not a brand deal, I had to pay for that and the embossing. They were very helpful and nice considering my requests and I look kind of mental just turning up and wanting to film myself buy something. They were very accommodating. I've come back over the road to Sloane Square to take a closer look at what's going on today for this Chelsea and Bloom event. They've given me a map and some information on this Chelsea and Bloom event. It's an annual competition in association with the Royal Horticultural Society and it sees Chelsea's streets filled with flowers, bringing the Chelsea Flower Show spilling out into the local neighbourhood. This year is the event's 10th anniversary and the theme this year is fairy tales. So retailers in their area adorn their storefronts with floral displays to compete for the coveted Chelsea and Bloom Awards. And a few of them have got themed products, promotions and events in store. According to the map they've given me, there are 39 participating stores, so I'll take a quick walk around and have a look at them. But you can also take one of their rickshaws, they have complimentary rickshaws rides, so you can be chauffeured around the 39 participating stores. Just across the road in Duke of York Square, they've also got this teacup shaped bar serving Pims in a Mad Hatter's Tea Party themed pop up. It's also Saturday today, so the fine food market's on. It's definitely worth a visit if you're in town. Every Saturday from 10 till 4 here in Duke of York Square, there's this fine food market. It serves some excellent food that you can either eat while you're here or take away with you. It all looks amazing, but the smell of the food cooking is incredible. It's making me really hungry. So let's go and check out some of these Chelsea and Bloom displays. Now the theme this year is fairy tales, but this is a very affluent part of town. It's a fair way there already. The houses and apartments look amazing, as do the private gardens. I think supercars outnumber Boris bikes. I've certainly seen more supercars being driven today than Boris bikes being ridden. The official judges have already picked their winners. Sarah Chapman won best floral display. Smyerson, who we visited earlier, came highly commended. And Kate Spade, New York, won both an innovation award and was voted by the public to be people's champion too. So bravo to the winners. Beyond the scope of the competition, for me, this Joe Malone one is a real winner. It was created with help from Putting Down Roots, which is a charity dedicated to helping people recover from the issues that create homelessness and rebuild their lives. The gardeners gain new skills and qualifications, helping them find longer term employment. For someone, this garden may be one of many small stepping stones from homelessness to rebuilding their lives. Now, number 11 Cadogan Gardens is a real surprise. If there was a spirit award, they deserve it. You walk around the corner and it's clad in scaffolding. You'd think maybe they wouldn't be in it to win it, but I'm sure underneath all that scaffolding is a beautiful boutique hotel. It's not very photographic this year, but they certainly didn't give in. It's a lot better than some of the other stores managed that aren't having building and maintenance work carried out. If nothing else, you have to admire their commitment for that and not giving up. I bet the building contractors have never seen anything quite like it on their scaffolding. I think I saw every entry and this one was the hands down winner with the public in Chelsea. There were people taking snaps of most of them, but this one, Liz Earl, people were queuing up to get in it and have their pictures taken which the design encourages. They even provided selfie sticks if you're on your own. Now I've bought my own selfie stick. 
that's what YouTubing's all about, and I was gonna get in it, but every time someone was either in it or waiting to get in it. I don't know much about floral design, but whoever designed this one is a genius in terms of brand engagement. People are having their pictures taken in this garden all day long. The brand's name and logo will be top left in many of them, and I would imagine the images of this one will be the most shared and the most viewed because there are people in them on Facebook and all the other social medias. So my winner of the most brand engaging garden design, the most connected with consumers, goes to this one, Liz Earl. As you can see, these two were also hugely popular with the public, Browns and Brunello Cuccinelli. And it's the 150th anniversary of Alice in Wonderland, so a number of the participants had used that as inspiration in their theme. The Jamira Carlton Tower Hotel had an interesting display. Unfortunately, someone's parked their Bentley right in front of it. And Cadogan Gardens is directly opposite the hotel, so some of the guests staying on this side of the hotel must have amazing picturesque views of what must be one of the most well-maintained private gardens in town. Most of the participants did an amazing job put on an excellent display. A couple of them, I had to double check the map to make sure I was standing in the right place. They put in little to no effort. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up like button. And if 
you'd like to be the first to see my new films, the subscribe button. Toodles!